Peace everyone, I'm Maskard here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to draw and color a rose. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to begin by telling you all the supplies that I'm using. The pencils that I'm going to be using is Luminance colored pencils. I'll have the color palette on the screen in just a moment. I'm going to be using odorless paint thinner to blend with a number four round brush and I will be using a mechanical pencil to do my initial sketch along with a kneaded eraser to erase those pencil sketches. All right, so here is the color palette that I'm using. You can see I'm only going to be using eight colors today. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of sketch out where I want my rows to be and uh, Go from there. I want to try to use as much of the paper as I can, so I'm just going to kind of do a, uh, a rough sketch. The way that I'm going to start is use doing the stem, just kind of uh, placing the stem there. I'm going to kind of do like a bell shape for the beginning in part, the innards of the the rose itself, and this will kind of help me establish the size of the rose as well. I'm going to give it kind of a lip, just kind of curl this around like that. I'm going to start building the inner part, kind of the inner leaves of the, the bud of the rose. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start building out and start building some of the the other leaves, the other uh, rose petals. Just kind of doing a loose sketch, nothing too defined. Just kind of playing with it a bit. You want to keep your pencil strokes nice and light so that you don't have to struggle too much when you're erasing them. So usually I barely even touch my pencil to the paper. Might not look like too much right now, but I can assure you once once we start adding some color it will it will come to life. Just want to kind of get the general shape down. Greetings everyone that's in the chat. Thanks for joining the live stream. Feel free to follow along. I won't be working too fast, hopefully, for, for you to keep up. Right now I'm just doing general sketch of the rows, kind of getting the shape getting some of the, the petals blooming a bit. One of the things with doing flowers is you don't necessarily have to get everything perfect to whatever reference photo you might be looking at. And I'm, I'm using a reference photo for my rose. That's how I 
kind of got the shape and the colors for it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm looking up, looking at my reference photo. That's that's pretty good with the shape. I'm just going to kind of define it a little bit more, kind of bring out some of the details a bit, just make sure I have all the features that I want. Some of these petals are going to be curling over, so I want to make sure that I get that curl and kind of get that shape in there a little bit more defined. You want to make sure that your your lines are nice and smooth, nothing too nothing too jagged. There's there's some jagged lines, but for the most part you want to make sure that your your corners are nice and rounded. That's going to give that soft texture that you get flowers. So nothing too sharp. Stay away from the sharp lines. A lot of the detail will come out once we start coloring. And then I'll take you through kind of my thought process for, for all the colors that I am going to be using. I have a nice bright red rose, just like you see on the thumbnail of the video. Nice bright red. Yes, yes, my fiance does get home soon. For those asking in the comments. It is it is uh, much later. It's much later in the the evening here and than I normally live stream, but for the sake of the weekly tutorials uh that I intend to do every week, I I, I plan on live streaming around this time to accommodate a lot of my US viewership. And for that reason, my fiance understands quite well. And it's going to save me a lot of work on the weekends so I can work less and she's okay with that. But for today, she's out getting her hair done, so I don't think she'll mind too much. Thank you for asking, though. You have quite the knowledge of my my life. <laughs> it's funny. Makes me laugh. Yeah, so what I'm doing now is just kind of defining the rose shape before getting into the colors. Um, once I get this, I'm actually going to use my kneaded eraser and erase most of the lines and just get everything kind of very light. I don't like to I don't like to color over top of my graphite lines with colored pencils because the way that I blend it, it uh, the 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 blending process does not uh, cooperate too well with graphite, and sometimes you can get some smearing issues. So it's always good to uh, erase your graphite lines the best you can. Of course, always thinking of my US viewers. I apologize now if I happen to miss your questions or comments. Uh, I want to try to get this drawing done in somewhat of a timely manner, but I will glance up every now and again to try to make sure I don't miss any questions with this piece.
All right, so this is pretty much it for the outline. Don't think there's there's not too much detail left to add. Once I start adding the colors, it will really start to come to life. So that's it for the sketch. Um, it's a bit rough. Let me clean up a few of the lines so you get a better idea of what the sketch looks like and to make sure that I have everything that I want. So some of these lines are not supposed to be there. So if you're checking your sketch, you'll want it to look something like that. So there's the sketch of the rows. And now uh, after cleaning up my lines, what I like to do, I almost exclusively use a kneaded eraser. So uh, what I do is I just take it into a little ball like this and I just kind of roll it. And this gives me a nice um, kind of ghost outline of all of my graphite and it picks up all the excess, all the excess graphite that would otherwise be smeared around um, while using the colored pencils. So this is, and it might not pick up too well on the video as far as being able to see this ghost outline, but I can assure you it's, it's still there. I like to get it really light and then just do the rest of the drawing with my colored pencils. And I'm gonna get right into the nice reds. So there you go. Thank you, Sherry. I'm glad you enjoy my work. I appreciate that. Okay, so let's see here. The first color, um, first color I'm going to be using is the 083. This is kind of a light purple fuchsia color, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do one petal at a time, and this is gonna make my life really easy because I can break this up kind of into a puzzle. So I'm going to draw this petal here. Not using too hard of pressure. This this purple is not the purple that I want the flower to to be. It's kind of like an undercolor, kind of a toned purple that I want coming in to the reds. So I'm just kind of using it to draw the outline of this petal. And I'm going to kind of do it like a puzzle. So I'm just going to do one petal at a time, and it's going to make this, it's going to make drawing uh, really easy and, and not feel overwhelming. So if you were to draw this row as large, a lot larger, it's a bit easier to kind of just break it up into pet, one petal at a time. And uh, now I'm just doing a light layer of this, this kind of uh, pink purple, this 083 color that I have on the screen. Now I'm going to switch over to my my dominant red, which is the 065. This is going to be most of the red coming through the rows. It's going to look a bit brownish, but once I blend it out, it will it will look really nice and red. You don't have to be too afraid of these first initial layers. Uh, the other thing that I m think I forgot to mention is that I'm using Stonehenge Volume Paper, and it, it lets me get plenty of layers. I can easily get four to five layers uh, with blending. So I'm just kind of doing a light coat of the 065 over this whole part of the petal, just like this. And I'm not really um, too concerned about my the direction my pencil stroke is going in, although with the rows, you kind of want to pretend you're coming out like this. So whatever direction you're going, kind of want to go that, that way, but this is such a light layer that you're not really going to see any of the pencil strokes. And that's what I like about the Volume Smooth paper that I use. It, it has enough 
grain to it and it's absorbent enough to let you get plenty of layers but it's also a really smooth paper it's one of the it's a fairly smooth paper it's a bit smoother than hot pressed watercolor paper and it lets you it lets you um do multiple layers but it also is nice and smooth that's which i like the next color that i'm using is the 069 and this is where I'm going to kind of block in some of my shadows for this petal. So these shadows are kind of coming out through here. And this is where the pencil strokes are going to become a bit more important. So I'm kind of blocking in where the shadows are going to be. And they kind of come up like this. So you can see with my pencil strokes, I'm, I'm making sure that they're all coming out, kind of growing out of the, the petal following the same contours that the petal is going. All right, now I'm going to add a bit of the 571. This is a really nice hot pink kind of color. And I'm going to I'm going to press a little bit harder and kind of get this color down. And this is going to occur right where the highlight is, so I'm working outside of the shadow. There's no need to add this to the shadow. So I'm just going to press a little bit harder. Same thing with the pencil strokes following the contours of the petal itself. And I'm switching back to the 065 and I'm going to kind of cover everything a bit more with this and get those get those layers pressed down a bit more a bit more pencil pressure here and I like to use my pencil kind of more at an angle this prevents you from wearing down your tip faster and you don't have to you don't have to sharpen the pencil as much so that's what Excuse my camera, it shuts off every half hour and I have to turn it back on, but yes, that's what that was, if you're unfamiliar with it. Um, anyways, yeah, so I'm just adding a bit more color around the highlight. I'm avoiding the highlight right now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my odorless paint thinner. and my number four round brush. I like to use a brown brush because it has a fine tip that lets me control detail, but it also has a wider part that lets me do larger areas. But I chose to do use a number four round brush for this piece because it's, it's quite small. And similar to my pencil strokes, I'm using my brush to push out the color in the same direction that the contour of the petal goes. So that's the uh, one thing that I'm doing. Seems we have quite a few people in the chats. Um, hello everybody. I can't quite see how many there are, but uh, thanks for joining the live stream. Is there anybody here following along right now? One of the things with, with the paint thinner, you want to be very precise as to where you put your line because you can smear the, the pigment past where you orig originally uh, placed your pencil. So you can, use, you can use your brush to create a much stronger defined line where you want your petal to end. And with the number four round brush, because the bristles are quite small, you can be pretty liberal with the amount of paint thinner that you're using. On the first initial layers, when you're working with um, color pencils and, and doing the blending with paint thinner, when you only have like a couple light layers down, you can use quite a bit of paint thinner. But when, you, when you're working on the third, fourth, and fifth layer, you really want to have a nice dry brush after you dip it in the paint thinner, almost to the point where you're only moving around the pigment 
with the fumes that are left on the brush. So at this point, I'm basically just dipping it in my bottle, getting it completely saturated, and then just dipping it off a little bit so that it's not dripping all over the place. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to go back over my shadows with the 407 color and this is really where a lot of the contrast is going to be coming from so um, you can give your you can give your color pencils a moment to dry um, I almost work right over top of it but um, it's it's good to let it dry and be delicate with the paper because if it's if it's too wet then you you can immediately just kind of damage your paper so just you can be patient, but as you can see, I'm not. And I'm just going to go in and darken my shadows um, quite a bit. I really want to add a lot of contrast to this rose, so I'm going to um, really use this 407. This 407 color is a dark brown, a really, really dark brown, and it's just one of my favorite pencils I've already gone through. I think two of these pencils um, already with my kit of luminance. Now I'm switching back to my 065 uh, just to bring in some more of those reds and work up towards that highlight. And it's okay to blend over that highlight because I also have a 1, a 001, which is just the luminance white. And I'm going to use that to kind of boost some of my highlights a bit more. Now I'm, I'm pressing a bit harder here at the edge to get a nice sharp edge. And I'm, I'm using uh, my pencil strokes to kind of create that rippled texture that you get in rose petals and this is going to add a lot of the detail uh, into the piece that kind of makes the petals look uh, silky and realistic. Just kind of short pencil strokes to kind of feather out the highlight a little bit. And then I'm going to switch back to the 571 just to uh, add a bit more of the pink into the highlights. And then I'm going to blend this out and I think this petal, this part of the petal will be done. It's very, it's, it doesn't look like much right now, but it will here soon. When you have a bunch of the powder from the pencils, you want to brush that off. Never use your hand. Just use a light brush and kind of brush it off a little bit. You should never use your hand to brush off your artwork because the oils in your fingers and hands and stuff can mess it up. Not to mention your skin tends to grab some of the uh, pigment and you'll just end up scraping it across your artwork. So. Lesson learned from many years of messing artwork up with brushing things with my hand. I'm being a little more precise with my brush strokes, even more so, just to help reinforce that kind of uh, silky texture. Trying to bring out the shadows and blend it nicely with the uh, 05 or 069 red. I'm kind of going right over the highlight a little bit just to get a nice blend between those two colors. So there's a question of whether or not Zest It will go yellow with time. I'm not sure. I've never used a Zest It before, um, though I've never heard of it doing anything. Uh, some people swear by using Zest It, so I, I'm not sure. I'm just using a odorless mineral spirit, a uh, terpenoid kind of thing. Same stuff that you'd clean uh, oil paint brushes with. Okay, so I think that's I think that's good for this petal for now. I don't want to do the highlights yet because I want to control my highlights. Uh, the next thing that I'm doing, uh, I'm going to use the 065, and I'm going to kind of draw in this petal here. 
So there's this this one pedal coming here, and then there's one right here. Um, and given that I'm going to switch really quick and do the outline with the 083, and it create a nice uh, break between the two pedals right there. So this is where two pedals touch. And I want them to I want there to be enough contrast difference there. So I'm going to do the outline with the 083 and then switch back to the 065 and work the rest of the outline there and then right here. So you can see this is I'm doing this kind of like a puzzle piece. Um, and I'm just going to kind of blend uh, do a light layer here on the inside where most of this red is. I can go pretty dark right here, so I'm just kind of doing the first two initial layers. I'm going to switch really quick to the 571, the highlight color, kind of do this part here, just get that highlight nice and bright. Um, and I'm going to switch to the, actually I'm going to switch to the 069, um, and this is kind of a, a dark burgundy color, so I'm going to use a bit of this for the shadows. This is going to keep the shadows a bit more red than the 407. So I'm just going to work this in a little bit. I'm doing small circles, but you don't necessarily have to do small circles. A lot of uh, contrast in this part of the flower, so I want to make sure that I get that really good. And there's kind of this glow coming from this area, so I'm going to avoid that area. And I'm going to add just a bit of the 407 into the darkest parts of this Get a nice outline, get some nice contrast in there. Just a uh, soft layer, nothing too, too rough. Now I'm going to, again, take my paint thinner and blend this out. I'm going to start blending it in the highlight and then kind of work my way backwards from there. Get the highlight in and then blend the other colors out. You want to be careful when you switch from your lights your light areas to your dark areas because you can kind of smear them together in a way that you you wouldn't want. Now I'm going to start kind of in the shadow area here and kind of push forward. I'm just uh, for this part I'm I'm using the the paint thinner and I'm doing small circles with my brush. Having, I usually use a number eight round brush, but I thought because of the fine detail here, I wanted to use something a bit smaller. But you could probably still get away with a number eight round brush. It holds a bit more paint thinner, so you can kind of take it a bit, a bit farther than where I'm going with this one. I kind of have to refill it quite a bit. Use my brush to kind of brush away some of the extra pencil stuff. Um, I'm going to switch back to the 065 and kind of work in some of these colors a bit more. Work on that outline there to strengthen that, st strengthen the contrast between those two. Uh, now I'm using the 571 to kind of get rid of that purple line that I created and blend the highlight in just a bit more. So I'm, I'm adding a bit more pencil pressure at this point just to make sure the, the line there is nice and strong. Um, then I'm going to use the 407 to build in some of these shadows 
just a bit more. And again, the pencil strokes at this point are following the contour of the petal. So they're all going this, the same direction as the, the petal. And the paper is getting a lot smoother at this point. So with this layer, I'm going to have to use a little bit less of the paint thinner when I blend it out. Now I'm using the 069 to just kind of, this is a good transition color between the 065 and the 407. So I'm kind of just uh, doing this layer here to, to blend those together a bit. And a little bit more of the 065 just to blend those out a bit more before using paint. So now I'm grabbing my brush again. I'm just going to start blending that out. See, I'm, I have a bit too much paint thinner on there, so I'm going to, I have a little paper towel here that I use to wipe it off with. Now here I'm kind of dabbing it along the edge of the highlight and the shadow just to help create that, that um, petal texture. Keeping that same brush stroke all the way through the shadow. Down into the bottom part of this petal. You can see the highlight is a bit pinker than what I want, so I'm actually kind of picking up some of the pigment and brushing over top of it just to balance it out a little bit more. There we go. I'm taking some of the pigment from the petal behind it and I'm pushing it along the edge to sharpen those edges so that there's a nice contrast between these two petals. Let's see, what petal will I do next? Um, I'm going to sharpen my pencil really quick just to have a, a bit better tip on it. Uh, so I'm going to draw this shape here. And this kind of goes down like this. And this is actually two petals, so I'm, I'm doing two at once, but since it's such a small space, I think it's acceptable. So I kind of have these two shapes here. And for the most part, this is colored like this, just a short, or just a small, uh, light layer here, and then I'm going to just basically color this whole thing in here like that. Um, I'm going to pick the highlight color real quick, the 571, and hit up this highlight right here, and add a bit of a highlight to this one just to help separate those two petals. And then I'm going to use the 069 to uh, bring in some of these shadows a bit. Again, following the contours of the petal. Um, and the shadow here is kind of, there's kind of a fold in this uh, petal, so I'm just gonna bring in some of the shadow, just like this. This part here is pretty dark, so I'm gonna go back over it with the 069 and just kind of blend those out, make the edges a bit softer. And then again up here, I'm adding a bit more pencil pressure to get better coverage on the paper. Just a small sh uh, highlight. Uh, now I'm gonna use the 407 to darken some of those, those darker parts of the shadow. And then here at the bottom, of this petal. 
And once again, grabbing my brush, but before I blend it out, I want to get rid of all those little excess bits from the pencil. And I'm just kind of blending this out freely, uh, staying within the highlights when I'm blending them, and then staying within the shadows when I'm blending them, kind of doing small circles, just trying to stay in control. And when I push that pigment around, I'm staying outside of the highlight just so that the highlight stays nice and bright. And then again, using the pigment from the petal behind it to kind of sharpen the edge around the highlight. And here, pushing, pushing that pigment out in the same direction that the petal texture is going. It's a little bit less of a highlight in this one. Now, the next petal that I'm going to do, um, I'm going to kind of wrap this one around like this. Um, it has kind of a, a fold like that. And then comes around like this, kind of like this. So there's, there's the lip where that petal starts to curl. And then the inner part of the petal kind of comes down like this and like this. And I'm just going to cut it off here. Um, something like this. And then just following the you know, first initial sketch that I did, kind of breaking this up into this part. Um, this this petal, I'm just going to color this part in the petal completely, and I'm using the 065. I'm just going to color it in completely like this. Uh, and I'm just doing a light layer because I'm just going to uh, layer right over top of this and establish those highlights and shadows. So um, you can just kind of color this whole part in like this. If you have any questions at this point, feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer them. I have a bit of attention to spare at this point. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that I will be doing next week's tutorial as well as a live stream like this. However, in the future, uh, these live stream tutorials will only be available to my Patreon supporters. I'm just kind of doing a couple um, to promote them a bit and give you an idea of what you're going to get if you support me on Patreon. Uh, don't run over there right now and uh, sign up. I haven't yet changed the Patreon tiers, but I, I will be at the end of this month, just so you know. In fact, when I live stream the next tutorial, it will be um, the official beginning of my new Patreon setup. Uh, for this pedal here, there's a little bit of a unique highlight with the 083, kind of purple fuchsia color. So I'm going to just throw that in, light layer right here where the highlight is. This is kind of replacing the 571 highlight. Add that, and then I'm going to do the 571 around it, and then blend those out a bit together. Using a light light pencil text uh, light pencil pressure. Um, now for the shadows on this part here, I'm going to start working the shadows in a bit. I want this lip to stand up off the petal, so I'm going to add a shadow here just a little bit. 
uh, and then the, act the actual shadow kind of comes right onto the lip. So the lip is what's being, what's going to be sh shaded instead of what's underneath. And it's just going to kind of cut across the lip just like this. So this is going to be the shadow of the lip. And again, I'm using the 069. Uh, and then for this part of the petal, shadow kind of just just cut it off here. It's all pretty dark, but um, then shadow kind of, this is kind of a cast shadow from some of the other petals. So just kind of coloring it in a bit like this. And once those are blended out, you'll see how that shadow works a bit, a bit better. And then there's a, another cast shadow over here. Oh, that's cool, Stephanie. I've, I actually finished my color chart today as well. Thanks for stopping by and saying hi. Just doing light layers with this pencil right now. And add a bit of it down here just to kind of establish that gradient because it's going to kind of get dark down here and then lighter as it goes up. And because of that, I'm going to add a bit of the pink right underneath of the, the little lip there just to um, help create that, that gradient. Now back to the 065 to kind of just add another layer of that color, especially in the shadows. You want that shadow to be nice and saturated. Uh, same thing up here on the lip itself. Just kind of create the nice, there, it's, it's tough to get a nice gradient in such a, sh a small amount of area, but just doing that a little bit and then blending it out will, will help. A bit more pencil pressure as well. And I'm going to add a bit of the 407 down here just to darken it and I'm doing a light light layer um, it will become a bit more prominent once I blend it out with the paint thinner so there's no reason to press hard with it at this point here at the here along the edge though you can press kind of hard to get that shape nice and sharp It looks a bit rough right now. That's the best part about the uh, using the paint thinner to blend as you take that roughness away, remove all the texture from the brush strokes and stuff. I want the to I want to treat this this kind of petal lip here separately than the rest of the petal and I want this line to be nice and sharp so I want to try to keep my my brush stroke just along that line nice and sharp to get to get a nice separation between the two and then I'm just going to use the use the pigment and try to gradiate from the dark shadow there over to this kind of purpley highlight. This is where I use the 083. And I want to push that pigment right up to the line to help create that separation. Kind of piling it up right there at the edge. Now I'm going to work on the bottom part here, 
kind of work in the shadows and just blend everything out. Again, here, this line I want to be nice and sharp, so I'm going to pay attention to what I'm doing with my brush there. But for the most part, just doing kind of small circular motions and getting everything blended out. This is just the first initial layer, so no reason to rush. Again, here I want the line to be nice and sharp, so I'm kind of pushing right along that line, trying to keep it as sharp as I can, because the pencils are so soft that you kind of get a fuzziness, and you can't get those nice, sharp lines that you can with uh, more dense pencils. So you use the brush to kind of get that effect. I don't want to work too fast into my highlights. I want to get the shadow blended out and then kind of work my way slowly there so that all the pigment that I'm pushing into the shadow uh, slowly gets lighter and lighter. I don't want to bring into any of the the 407 or the 069 into the highlighted area so that's why I push it slowly and kind of work around it in a circle and then just slowly work my way there. Just like that. There. We'll probably come back to the that pedal again, but let's move on to another pedal. So I'm going to grab my 065 again. I'm going to do this pedal here. So I'm just going to trace around and define that edge. Just like that. Kind of comes like this. And this is all one. This is all one part here. So just uh, color it all in and this part here will be shaded much darker. And then with the pencil strokes, I want to make sure that I'm moving them in the direction that the pedal is, the contour of the pedal is going. And the highlight kind of works all the way to the edge here. So I want to be, uh, be sure that I, I keep that white part there for the highlight. Just like that. My pencil could use a little sharpening, but I'm going to try to avoid that as long as possible. Now, for the highlight, back to the 571. Just color in the highlight there. And I'm going to use the 069 to establish these shadows here. It's really dark right here. And then just kind of contour the petal, similar as I did with the 065. And around the edge. This time I do need to sharpen it. No, I do not gesso my paper before I, before I start. Uh, this is just uh, volume. This is Stonehenge, uh, Stonehenge volume paper, um, so there's, there's no gesso on it or anything. It's just a clean piece of paper. Thank you for asking. A 
I'm going to do one more light layer with the 06, uh, the 065, just to bring in some more of those reds before I blend out with the paint thinner. And I think I'm, yep, I broke my lead. That doesn't happen too much with luminance pencils. So I'm going to have to spend some time sharpening this. Give me a second. I don't remember the last time I broke a pencil, pencil lead with the luminance pencils. Right, now with that I'm going to switch to my brush and blend it out after I dust off some of those little pencil bricks. I have quite a bit of paint thinner on here, but it will be fine as long as I stay within my colored area and don't jump out. Work those lines there to make sure everything's nice and sharp. I'm staying off the highlight a bit right now. I'm kind of focusing on the, sh the shaded area and kind of pushing it in just a bit just to make sure that everything's blended really nicely. That's the key is to have everything that's meant to be blended, blended well. And everything that's not meant to be blended, not blended. Now I'm just kind of going over the highlight a bit. I'm going to bring in some of the 407, and I'm going to bring it in uh, on this part of the flower as well. Now that I have something beside it, I have, a, I have something to compare it to, so I'm going to bring it here. I'm going to also bring it here on this part. So it kind of it, it's blended really well uh, in the reference photo. So I'm kind of I'm adding quite a lot of pressure, um, just enough to cover the paper, not enough to damage it. Just like that, a little bit in there, and then I'm going to brush that out. Now I'm not even going to dip my my brush in the paint thinner because I know that it's still going to be kind of fumey and it's going to have plenty in there uh, to to move this around. It's very it's very delicate at this point uh, to blend with the paint thinner because uh, it's starting to get smooth and you don't want to add too much because you're going to start taking the pigment right off the paper again. Just kind of soften the edges a little bit of this shadow that I drew. It's going to help it blend into the rest of the flower much, much better. Hey Chrissy, thanks for joining. Um, so what brands of pencils do I suggest using if you can't afford luminance? Prismacolor. I used Prismacolor pencils for the first two years that I was learning colored pencils. Um, I didn't get luminance pencils until just last year. I, I haven't even worked with luminance pencils for a year. Um, so if you can't afford luminance pencils, which I certainly couldn't, I didn't, um, you know, I didn't even think of getting luminance. Like I always wanted them, but I didn't really think of forking out the money until I um, could really afford them. And, and I didn't buy them until I got a commission. Uh, and basically my commission paid, paid for my colored pencils. <clears throat> All right, now that that's blended out, brush it off really quick. So yeah, there, I mean, really there's nothing wrong with Prismacolor pencils. Um, except when you sharpen them. They, they're a bit, the, the build quality is just not as good. The build quality is just not as good as luminance, and so they, they tend to break, which you're probably aware of. Um, most people are aware of that. Uh, okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna color this one in. I'm gonna outline this big this big petal. There's a lot going on in this petal, so 
I'm just going to get it done and out of the way. Kind of goes like this um, and wraps around like this. But there, there is absolutely nothing wrong with using um, Prismacolor pencils uh, to do something like this uh, to practice with. The thing is, the you're you're going to get the same kind of effects with the Prismacolor that you get with the luminance, and that's why they're so good to practice with. They're super cheap. I mean, you can get like the full set of 150 uh, Prismacolor pencils for literally a third of the price of their the full set of the luminance pencils so they're definitely worth getting um, in fact i consider buying the 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 full set of the prismacolor pencils just to incorporate uh in some of the the work because th that it's more colors and you, you never can't have too many colors okay so for this part of the pedal most of the highlight let me try to get this. The most of the highlight is kind of coming like this. So I'm using the 571 to color this part here. Just kind of color in the whole thing, just like this. Um, some of the highlights kind of go here and all the way back here. And then here the highlights come uh, right kind of all along the edge of this and here too yeah so what i'm doing is drawing in where the highlights go and then i'll just work the rest of the colors in around it it's a good way to kind of break things up a little bit when they get more complicated yeah uh also polychromos i've been i've been kind of itching to get Polychromos, I, I haven't made the plunge yet. I love my luminance so much that I almost, um, I almost if, struggle to find a, a necessity in, in getting the polychromos, but I know that they sharpen a bit more. They're a bit more dense, uh, so you can bring out some of the finer details of things. Uh, I'm working with the 065 to uh, start bringing in some of the shadows in the darker parts of this this petal here. Just kind of coloring it all in a little bit, trying to trying to follow the contour of the petal. There's a bit of kind of detail in the shadows around this portion over here, so I'm trying to make sure that I get it good and making sure my pencil strokes are in the contour um, of the rose itself, just to help reinforce that texture. It's always good. It, when when establishing texture, it's always good to pay attention to the direction the texture is flowing. So that's what that's what you got to do with the rose petals to make them look nice. This is a, right now the rose is a bit flat, and it's going to remain that way until the very end. And then I'm going to go through and kind of heighten heighten all the contrast. Get everything. Get everything. Vibrant. Um, now I'm going to use the 083 to add some of that that unique purple highlight, like right in this area, just a little bit, just right here. And I might even throw some up here too. Now I'm going to use the 069 to darken some of those shadows that fall here. Um, Bit here.
Yes, I, I actually I have a few of the very thin Prismacolor pencils. Um, I use them in my drawing journal when I do my uh, figure drawings and things like that. But I only have three colors. I that, yeah, that's a good that's a good idea to use them to sharpen. But one of the things that I don't like about them, uh, they do they they damage the paper. So if you do use them to sharpen your details, because they're so hard, they're kind of like like H4 density, and um, they they tend to damage the paper quite easily, even even with a light touch, like just to lay them down. So they either don't go down at all, or you have to basically damage the paper to get them to go down. But I, I do like them. I like the effect that I get with my with my figure drawings. I'm adding a bit of the shadow on this back pedal here and on this pedal here. Kind of skipping a step with these, but it's okay. I'll switch back to my 065 and add the red to this pedal. Back pedals here. Just like this. These petals are so small, the detail in them is very minimal, so you don't have to add too much to it. Uh, thank you, Chrissy. I'm glad you like the way the rose is coming along. Uh, let's see, I have a question here. I haven't tried them. But... Oh, I, yeah, I haven't, I haven't incorporated the Prisma Very Thins in, in too much of my work. I, I think I may have in the past kind of tried to use them um, to add like that last bit of necessary detail, but for the most part I've I've been able to get everything I need out of my luminance, but I, I there is there it's it is sometimes like I I, I kind of want that extra detail. I'm just gonna add a a little bit of the 407 right along this edge uh, because this is where the shadow breaks and it's at its darkest. It will help bring out some of the contrast later on in this piece. Now I'm going to brush away the dust and start blending out. Uh, I think I'm just going to start kind of in the highlight and just try to blend this out as much as I can in one pass. Uh, so I'm making sure that my brush strokes are still in the same direction as the petal texture and uh, maintain that same same pattern throughout the piece just to make sure everything flows in the right direction it's subtle but in the end it makes a huge difference right up to that line. I want to make sure that line is as sharp as I can make it with my brush strokes. I want to go over it and start blending these things, these two petals together, so very very delicate with it. Same thing here. I can I could use a little bit more of the 407 or the 069 to kind of break these petals apart here so they don't blend together so much. Nice sharp edges. Some of the white part of the paper I'm just leaving white and then I'm pushing pigment right over top of it 
uh, to kind of give it the, the tint, and I, I can use that as a highlight later on in this piece. See, it's for me when I'm when I'm working on a piece um, a lot larger than this, breaking it up into these small digestible sections where I can I can get pretty much this section close to eighty five to ninety percent complete, uh, and then once I get to the very end, I only have those last final little details to kind of go back and touch things up, but it it just helps the flow of the workflow, the workflow of the piece, because um, you know when you're, when you're working on a much larger uh, canvas size or paper size, um, it can get really overwhelming really fast to have a large drawing in front of you. And I've, I've never been um, one of those artists that kind of like throws everything down and then slowly builds up, you know, the details of everything all kind of all at the same time. Because I understand that, you know, when you're working on something, you tend to go through that kind of ugly stage where you know things are things haven't quite started to come together and it's just ugly to look at but when you do one small section at a time you kind of have one small pretty thing to look at after just a few minutes and then you can move on to the next small thing um, but it does take planning that's one of the things that uh, you really I, I stress a lot in my tutorials is planning you know, you can just, you can see that I mean, as a live stream, uh, I have my color palette up for you guys so that you can see exactly what colors I'm using um, in this piece. And obviously I had to pre-establish that color palette, which is what I do with all of my artwork. I'm always uh, establishing my color palette before I ever move on to anything. I always have the exact colors that I'm going to be using um, sitting right in front of me before ever starting. So I don't ever have to look for anything. I'm using the 065 to just bring in some more of those reds uh, and darken this up a little bit. And I'll use some of the 069 as well to just a, a touch of it though, just a touch of it. I want to bring in some more of these reds. Uh, it's looking a bit too pink in this area here. And then 069. Just a little bit light layers, because um, I'm going to blend this out. And I just want this red. Really what I'm doing is trying to add a bit more uh, contrast to this red here, just a bit more value to it, making it just a touch darker. And I will touch up that highlight a little bit with the 571 up here, just to uh, have a bit more pigment laying down. And back here as well, kind of smooth that out. It's a bit rough. If your, if the colored pencil still looks rough, even after blending it out, the problem is that you don't have quite enough pencil laid down. So just do that. Just lay down a bit. I'm using the 069 to kind of break these petals apart over here just a bit, just creating a, a line around it. And then I'll blend that out. I'll blend that line out so it's not so, so much of a line. And it will be a bit softer and it will look nicer. I can use that pigment there to, to, to build a, a sharper line with my brush. Now I'm just going to blend everything out. Hello? I'm sorry, can't quite pronounce your name.
But thanks for joining the live stream. And to sharpen my lines a little bit and then right here I want to make sure that lines nice and sharp and then on the other side as well avoiding that other petal and just kind of pushing the pigment to get a nice sharp line All right, time to move on to another petal. Oh, that's okay. Um, so the paper that I'm using is Stonehenge Volume. Stonehenge Volume paper, that's what I'm using here. All right, now I'm gonna switch back to the 065 and let's see. I'm gonna do this petal, this large petal here, kind of um, wraps around like this uh, comes out and around. And then also this is kind of a part of it, so I'm just gonna add this petal in too. I'm, I'm using my pencil really vertical to help get that nice sharp line um, and now I'm going to switch to the 571 and kind of draw in generally where those highlights are at. So kind of wraps around like this and most of the highlight is in this kind of area here. There's a nice highlight right along this edge. Yes, uh, Stonehenge Volume is my favorite for colored pencil. And the reason um, I, I've used quite a few papers before, I've used you know all kinds of watercolor paper, hot press and cold press. Um, I've used um, Bristol Smooth and Bristol Plate paper. And there's okay, so there's kind of um, it depends on what I'm working on for the, for these. Uh, tutorials, these weekly tutorials that I've been doing for the past six months. Um, I like the Stone, Stonehenge volume paper because I'm working exclusively in colored pencils and um, it's it's got great texture. Uh, for me, I personally dislike texture. I'm switching to the 065 by the way. Uh, I, I dislike texture. I hate it in anything that I work with. If I'm painting, I prefer panel. I hate canvas. Uh, and if I'm drawing, I want the smoothest paper made. Uh, my my all-time favorite paper is the Strathmore Bristol Plate paper. Um, it's it's You can use the Bristol Plate with colored pencils, uh, but you have to be good. Um, you have to know what layers to put down, what colors to put down. There's there's not a lot of guesswork that you can afford when working with the smoother papers. When you have a more toothy paper, like this uh, Stonehenge paper here, you can you can make mistakes. You can you know grab the wrong color or something like that, and they go over top of it, and in after a couple layers, it will fade away. You can kind of think of the paper uh, in grade depending on how many uh, layers you can you can add. So for this, switching back to the 571, uh, for this paper you can get four five layers easily, uh, and you can't really go beyond that. I mean, you could you could do a six layer on this paper, but at that point it's pretty much worthless. Um, but if you were to go a little bit rougher, say um, a watercolor paper, then you could probably get six or seven layers easily out of that and not really be able to go beyond that. 
But if you're switching to, say, uh, another paper that I like to use is the uh, Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper. Uh, this is the 065 again. Uh, and that's another paper that I really, really like to work with uh, with my colored pencils. And the reason I like to do the Bristol s Smooth Paper uh, is because you can get you can get four like maximum four layers so you have to be a bit more precise with your color color choices at that point um, but I like to incorporate markers into my work and ink um, I do not uh, that's why I don't like watercolor paper water watercolor paper for markers and ink is the worst paper in the world um, I can't stand it and that's why I don't use watercolor paper anymore because I like to do multi-medium work and uh, that includes markers and ink and watercolor paper is just worthless. Um, but when you, when you want to do that kind of work where you incorporate markers and inks and things like that into your colored pencil work, uh, the, the Strath Strathmore Bristol Smooth is just the best. Um, it's it's my favorite uh, in in that case I have I haven't quite gotten too much into the Bristol plate surface paper but that's um uh, that's because the papers quite expensive and I I've already uh, used all of my Bristol plate paper so I haven't quite experimented with it as much as I'd like to So there's a bit more detail showing up on this petal, so I'm making sure that my brush strokes, even in the beginning, are kind of uh, in the right direction. And I'm adding a, a few more layers and pressing a bit harder here. Switching over to the 569, or the 0, 069, sorry, 069. I'm going to add some of the darker uh, colors here. Yes, uh, paper, paper is a very personal choice, and that's why I always recommend that you experiment. Uh, go through you know, a catalog of paper and, and find something um, that you like. Uh, do a colored pencil work on co uh, watercolor paper, on volume paper, on Bristol Smooth paper. Uh, experiment with it and just you know go out and, and look for your favorite paper I mean it took me it took me three and a half years to find my paper um, and I've used I've used so many different kinds of paper it, I can't even recall all of them but I you know I would I would buy like a couple couple sheets or something or maybe even a sketchbook full of something and um, and I would just you know use it and then I would go to a different paper and you know I, I'd, I'd read I'd read about different papers and what people use them for and I'd you know just like you I'd ask people um, what what paper they use what paper they like um, and yeah I mean it's it's pretty safe it's pretty safe to assume that what the paper is made for is kind of like the ideal paper uh, for that medium. But when it comes to markers, there you know everybody has their favorite. When it comes to markers specifically, um, I'm pretty I'm pretty uh, set on my paper choice though, or what I do. Or all of my drawings and everything like that. I have been using a lot more of the Bristol Smooth paper, even for my colored pencil. For my larger projects, I use that that paper. Uh, now I'm going to start blending out with my brush. And I'm just going to kind of go crazy with it. Uh, and try to blend all this stuff out. because I have quite a lot of pencil laid down. I have like four layers 
already want to uh, strengthen this line here, make sure this line is nice and sharp. I mean, um, one of the things I, I have to bring up is the brush and pencil textured fixative spray. Um, that is something that has just changed colored pencils forever. Um, as, as far as not being limited by layers anymore, that's it's goodness. It's it's a tool that I swear by. You have to add it to your your color pencil tool belt like um, so if you if you like smooth texture but you're you don't want to give up your ability to add layers just just add the textured fixative um, and you won't have any worries there because I I've come into a little bit of trouble with the the Bristol smooth paper working with just exclusively colored pencil um, and once I maxed out the paper, or presumably maxed out the paper, I simply just, you know, added a few light layers of the textured fixative and it just brought everything right back. For this fuzzy line here, I'm going to use my brush to get that pigment nice and sharp right along there. And once it dries, it will be more clear, contrasted against the white paper. See, right now, all of my highlights, you can, you can kind of see how mid-ranged this rose is at this point but once I add uh, once I go back through and I boost my highlights with a with a bit of white colored pencil and my shadows with that 407 the rose will really uh, start to look nice right there at the end but right now I think the I think the highlights are, are pretty pretty good I that's one of the things about being limited with the colors, uh, with the luminance pencils. I wish they had a few more, a few more colors. At least ten more colors would be, would be awesome. Seventy-four is just a bit low. It's like minimum. Seventy-four is like the minimum. But yeah, just kind of blend everything out a bit more. I think this I, this needs a bit more layering. Uh, I'm still getting a, quite a lot of grain in it. Yeah, I, I wish Australia could get the textured fixative as well. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Um, you need to start emailing all your art stores and tell them they need to get that stuff in. But messing around. You know, supply and demand. Start demanding it and they'll start supplying it. Yeah, I, I don't know when... The, I, I'm pretty sure the textured fixative and everything has been out for, for quite some time and I only heard about it you know, a few months ago or whatnot, so... 
I'm going through with the 0, 6, 9 to add a bit more uh, contrast to the shadow. The shadow here is quite dark, so I need to add some of the 407 down in here as well. All the way up. Yeah, so if you're looking for if you're looking for the um, textured fixative, you can you can get it from Jackson's, and it, you they'll ship throughout Europe, um, and then from the U.S. you can order it from the store directly. Uh, but as far as Australia, yeah, I, I I don't know yet. But it's definitely worth grabbing some, that is for sure. I'm going to switch to the 407 and darken this up here. Uh, paper is pretty smooth at this point, so uh, when I blend this out, I don't need to use as much paint thinner. I can just kind of pick my brush right back up from drying and uh, it should be usable. But before I do that, I want to dust off those little specks and things. And and if you use too much paint thinner when your paper starts to get smooth from the the pencil just lift the pigment up and uh, push it around much more than you want so I'm going to be a bit more delicate with how much paint thinner you have on your brush at this point. I have a little paper towel over here that I, after I dip it in the paint thinner, I just brush it off on there a little bit. I'm going to move on to this large petal here. Kind of goes like this. I'm just outlining it with the 065. And it goes like this and wraps around. And then out like this and back in. So kind of a strange petal. And then this petal here kind of goes like this. Um, I'm going to grab the uh, 083 because this is quite purple here. I'm just going to do a light layer of the purple here to get that color in there. Uh, and there's, there's quite a bit of it here in the highlights. So I'm going to brush that down there and over here a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to go with the 471 or the 571 uh, and, and do some of the highlights, just kind of brush them in a little bit. Just like this. 
most of the highlight for this actually comes on this petal is like wrapped around quite a lot so a lot of the uh, highlight is kind of like this here on both sides really and then it kind of wraps around here and most of the highlight is all the way to the edge, so I'll just kind of color all that in. Yeah, so you're talking about emailing um, brush and pencil. You can actually contact Alona on Facebook. Uh, you can look her up on Facebook and I asked, I talked to her on Facebook a, a, quite a bit actually. Um, and you can, uh, she, she was going to send me some of the texture or the touch up texture, but I, I, I ended up not ordering it yet. But I, I plan to in the future. I was just going to have my sister from the United States send me some. But she's uh, really great at getting getting back to you when you try to contact her. Switching to the 065 now, and I'm just going to add some of the texture. There's a, a lot of the detail, a lot of the detail of the flowers starting to come out um, and in this petal. So you really, you really want to start paying attention to your pencil strokes, making sure that it's following uh, the correct flow and everything that the pedal has. A lot of the shadow kind of happens right in here. You kind of have these S shapes where it's like this and down. You kind of create like this S shaped shadow lines Okay, so the name of the paint thinner that I use, are you ready? It's Turpentina Bezpachova. <laughs> it's just a Polish brand that I got in the local art store. Or actually, uh, that's what it is, but uh, the brand is actually Schmoll. Schmoll. That's the brand. Uh, Turpentina. Beza Pachova. Beza Pachova, sorry. My Polish pronunciation is not the greatest. Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Should you, should you master blending in everything with, with solvents before moving on to powder blender? There's there's a lot, you know. I I haven't done the powder bl blender yet, um, and part of me thinks that I may never try it. And the reason is, is what I kind of mentioned earlier is that I hate texture, and the last thing that I want to be working on is sanded paper. So, um. I don't know. I I, I kind of don't like the the idea of constantly having to uh, spray my paper with the textured fixative uh, for every layer. Um, I can I can see how I would get really tired of doing that. Um, 
And I have such great blending capabilities with, with solvents that I, I almost struggle to have a desire to use the powder blender, but I'm sure that in the future I will, and I'll probably love it. Um, I think using the solvents uh, might be a little bit uh, easier, uh, especially starting out. So maybe, you know, maybe you should get good at using the solvents and blending that way first before, you know, trying out something that requires a few extra steps, a few, you know, um, but there's no reason not to to try it if you're genuinely interested in it, you know? Um, I mean, I, I didn't even know that you could blend colored pencils. When I started colored pencils, I didn't even know that you could blend them with solvent. I had no idea. Uh, when I started colored pencils, I was just like, well, people are doing really cool things with these, so let me give them a try. So everything that I was doing, I was doing without blending with solvents. I was just burnishing and doing thousands of layers in order to slowly build up the colors that I needed. And uh, that's that's how I started. Um, so when when I found out that you could blend like really well with the paint thinner, I was like, oh gosh, my life has forever changed. And I predominantly work in colored pencil now. Whereas had I not learned the blending capabilities of paint thinner, I would, I would prob probably be a, paint, a painter. Uh, I'm switching back to the 065 just to add a bit more color before blending this out. Just a bit. Some more texture as well. Just kind of getting everything there. I'm going to add a bit more of the purple in some of the areas because there's a lot of it. So the, uh, what is it, the 083. I want to add more of that purple into the highlights a bit before blending it out. There's quite a bit here. And I will color everything with the 571, all the highlighted areas, just so there's no white. There's no reason to blend when there's still a bunch of white on the paper, so. Uh, yes, my solvent dries really quickly. That's why I can just blend and then work right back on top of it. Um, not only is it drying super quickly, but I'm also not using a lot. That's the other benefit. I, I, I'm glad you asked that question because that's another benefit of using um, a bit smoother paper, a paper that's a bit less absorbent, say for like water paper, watercolor paper. Obviously watercolor paper is very absorbent. It's, it's for watercolors. Um, but the volume paper, well that's not for watercolors. I'm using the 065 again, by the way. Uh, so the paper's not as absorbent as watercolor paper. So when you use solvents on this paper, it doesn't absorb so much of it and it dries a lot faster. So you're not sitting there uh, waiting for your paper to dry because it stays on the surface of it. Um, it also gives you when the watercolor paper, since it's so much more absorbent, um, not only do you have to sit there and wait for it to dry, but you also have to you also have to be more concerned about your pencil strokes because they're going to absorb into the paper as well. I'm using the 069, by the way, um, which means that you can't spread the pigment around nearly as fluidly as you can with the smoother papers. I mean, when I use the Volume uh, or the uh, Bristol Smooth paper and I blend it out with the paint thinner, it just uh, just moves along so well. Um, sorry that you can't use odorless mineral spirits. I 
can't. Um, I mean, yeah. I, if you get a headache from it, then you get a headache from it. There's really nothing. I'm using the zero. Uh, I'm using the five oh four oh seven four oh seven to separate these petals a bit here and add just a bit more darkness there before blending it out in uh, a little bit of the 471 571 keep getting my numbers mixed up and a bit more of the 083 usually when doing usually when I'm recording these weekly tutorials uh, without live streaming I'm I'm switching between pencils so quickly that uh, I never thought it'd be possible to really call out what I'm doing uh, every single time, but it seems to be working pretty well. All right, now I'm just going to kind of blend through, pushing the pigment all the way up to the edges, and getting my keeping my edges sharp where I need them to be, and then uh, just blending everything else out. Nicely. Yeah, I want this edge to be nice and clean and sharp, nice and separated. How many, uh, if, if the odorless paint thinners give you a headache, uh, have you tried like different brands or? Um, maybe wearing one of those masks, the you know those respirator masks, not like the hardcore like um, painting booth spray booth mask, but you know maybe like a drywall mask or something like that. I mean that could potentially keep you from getting a headache. Uh, I know it's kind of cold in well in the northern hemisphere it's cold, uh, so maybe working with like a window open or a small fan to kind of keep the room circulated. I don't know. I have my bottle just sitting here open of my paint thinner. Not, not too much, maybe a hundred milliliters worth of paint thinner. Working right up along that edge to sharpen it a bit. The other, the other nice thing with the smoother papers is that when you're using the paint thinner, um, it tends to feather a lot less than the watercolor paper. So when you like. Uh, touch the paper and since it's more absorbent it kind of feathers out and it can it can bleed outside of where you want to blend so you, you, you overall you just have more control with the smoother paper I worked with a couple different types of watercolor paper um, and just it never came close it, between the volume or the Bristol smooth And it was so expensive too. The watercolor paper is so much more expensive than the Bristol Smooth paper.
So how are you guys liking liking the live stream so far? Am I am I being entertaining enough? This is just some helpful feedback if you don't mind. Now I'm just uh kind of brushing out some of the details. Smoothing everything out. I'm going to have to do probably two more layers, maybe even three more layers to kind of bring out the details of this this petal. Like I said, this petal has a lot of a lot of the detail. Uh, it's close up and kind of has the focus of the picture. So I got to make sure that it's nice and smooth, but it also has all the texture and all the details that um, the petal should have. It should look nice and silky. I think so far, uh, it's it, the flower's not too bad looking, but it does need a lot more contrast to it. Not too many more petals left, so after this I just have the stem and a couple of the leaves to do, and that won't take long at all. But I'll save that for the end because that's the boring part. All right, so I'm going to add some more layers to this petal before moving on. Uh, I think what I'll do is add some 065 to it. I'm going to sharpen this pencil a little bit and start getting some of those, those small creases that the petal has. That velvety texture. Oh no, the lead broke again. I can't believe that happened twice in one video. It's the same pencil too. Mm, must be a de defective pencil. How unfortunate. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just going to draw like some thin lines, kind of contouring the petal the way that it is growing. When you when you really want th really thin lines, I like to push the pencil instead of like drawing a normal way on its side. I think that it helps. Um, my paper is stuck to the desk because there's a couple pieces of tape on each corner. Just clear piece of, you know, standard office tape, nothing, nothing fancy. I just stick it really close to the edge of the corner just to keep it from tearing when I take it off. But yeah, that's all it is. I'm a big fan of tape. Use it for a lot of things. I'm going to be... I have my, you know, paint set, so eventually in the, I'll be doing uh, acrylic paint tutorials as well. In fact, next week, I'm probably going to do my, do a, a painting tutorial for the weekly tutorial as opposed to colored pencil, so. Oh, my sharpener, uh, the, I'm using a Prismacolor pencil uh, sharpener. I've had it for... I've had it for a little over a year now, um, and it works great. I like it because it has two different sizes, depending on what kind of pencil. N nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. But that's the, that's the pencil sharpener that I have. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to be painting, so if you have any suggestions, let me know. I was thinking about doing like a landscape or something similar. It's some something I can do in a couple hours or, or an hour or something. So.
Well, the thing is, it's it's breaking on one pencil, um, and I sharpened uh, my other pencils, and they were fine. So I'm I'm thinking it it maybe I I might have dropped this pencil, and it might have cracked the lead at the at the tip or something like that. So I, I don't think it's my pencil sharpener. I know it is kind of old, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's it's that I dropped it or something like that. Um, let's see here. I'm going to add a little bit of the 571 to the highlights just so that when I blend it out, I get better coverage because right now I'm not... I don't have the coverage that I want. Need pressing a little bit harder as well, bringing those pinks through. Uh, yeah, I think that should be that should be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and dust it off and blend it out. Now. I'm just kind of do it in the direction that everything is kind of flowing and get it nice and smooth. I'm using just the tip of my brush and doing a lot of small brush strokes there. It's like that. All right, I think that pedal's good. I'm going to move on to the next pedal. Let's see. I only have only have two left, so let's do them simultaneously. So I have this pedal here. It's coming out like this. And I have this pedal here come out like this. Um, and kind of just going to draw in where it's shaded. Kind of has this lip here, but it's shaded kind of like this. Color it in a little bit. Um, and then it wraps around and it has this kind of highlight, highlighted area that's happening right here. It's kind of folded up a little bit. So it has this kind of Y shape going on. Um, and I'm just going to color in this a bit here and here. And I'm using the 065. I'm just going to color that in. And then I'm going to have a bit of a shadow or a bit of a highlight coming around here. And then and it comes to a point like that. So I'm going to color all this in. It's a light layer. This is all pretty much shadow right here. So I'm going to grab my highlight color real quick, the 571. Just kind of color in that highlight. Uh, so how does my tape come off without hurting the paper? Um, well, if you uh, if you peel it slowly and you peel it away from the, the paper and kind of just rub your finger, just like that, it's off. So that's all I do. Uh, I'm switching to the 069. I'm going to darken some of those shadows. They're pretty dark in this area, so pressing kind of hard, especially where the petal meets another one, just like that, and over here, that, um, and then right along this edge. This is all shadow here. 
I want to, there, there is kind of like a lighter spot here, so I'm going to circle that and kind of work around it. I'm going to use this color. I'm going to switch back to my 065. I'm going to color in everything, really, um, except the brightest part of the highlight. Pressing quite hard along the edge of this petal just to make it nice and crisp. And then when I blend it out, it will it will look much much better. And I'll be able to use my brush to make it nice and sharp. Just kind of coloring everything. Just like that. Um, and I'm going to add a, a bit of the 407 before blending it out just to um, just to get those shadows really dark from the very beginning. Because they kind of just, they're almost black. Just like that. Now I'm just going to, uh, uh, I'm just going to blend it out now. See how that goes. See where I'm at. No, Alex, don't worry. You're not disturbing me. I appreciate your questions. Anything I can answer while while doing this, uh, I'm more than happy to to answer. That's the point of doing the doing this tutorial as a live stream, so you can ask me questions. So if you have no questions, then I won't answer anything. If you have a million questions, I will try to answer as many as I can. I'm being a bit liberal with my paint thinner as I'm blending this, and as I get close to the edge, I want to make sure that I get it nice and sharp, so I'm being a bit more careful. But otherwise, my brush strokes are pretty free, kind of just circular shapes, nothing, nothing special, nothing special. This is just the first layer, so I can, uh, I can correct most of the color stuff. Yeah, colored pencils, they, they are a nice clean medium. Uh, that's one of the things that I love about them. Uh, not only that, but it's also easy as far as like setting up. Like, you just pull out a piece of paper, you know, throw down a sketch, and you can, you can draw the rows. Um, pretty much any other medium, it's like, oh, I need this, I need brushes, I need water to clean my brushes, I need to sit and wait for the paint to dry. But even even then, like I I still my favorite medium is oil paint. Coming over here to blend out this petal now, and I want to move right along that other petal there to make this edge perfectly sharp. Just going back and forth. Just like that. Blend out the rest of the color. Work up to this highlight here. I think I probably could have added another red color just to make this flower pop a little bit more. Maybe um, so. If you if you are using luminance pencils, you can probably add zero seven zero. So that's one more pencil that you probably could throw in this. It's a bit brighter of a red, much hotter red. This is kind of a cool rose. But um, I will, uh, I'll bring out the highlights. It will make it contrast a bit more, and uh, it will look, it will look nice. 
He'll look good. There. Um, I think need a couple more layers probably. So I'm going to use, let's see, I'm going to use the 069 to kind of fix these transitions a bit more between the highlights and the shadow. So I'm just going to do some small circles here, just like that. Um, and then over here as well, kind of color this whole thing all the way up to here. And then the 065, I'm going to transition that a bit more right into the highlight. Just like that. And here as well, and here. Um, and then the highlight color, the 571. Touch up some of these highlights here. Just add a bit more color to it. Just like that. And kind of touch up some of the highlights in the other part, especially this one. This one's a little bit... needs a few more layers, I think. Just kind of go all over. Touch up any of the highlights with the 571 and get good coverage on everything before switching kind of the roll. Um, dust it off really quick before I start blending anything. Alright, so now I'm just going to go through and kind of blend everything out. Try to get it smooth and soft. That's kind of the goal at this point. Smooth and soft. That's what I want. I'm going to blend out some of these other petals as well where I feel like they, after they dry, they, they got a little bit of pencil texture left in them. So I'm going to go through and blend them out after doing a couple more layers of colored pencil on top just to make them smooth. The smoother that it is, the better it's going to look, especially this petal here. I'm being pretty liberal with my paint thinner, kind of just spreading it out. Still being wary of my lines though. Still want to keep the sharpness, just want to add some softness. You want soft sharpness. There we go. in here and more. Right. Now I'm going to, um, uh, what brands have I used? As far as colored pencils or paint, colored pencil, um, I've used only Prismacolor. Well, I've used Prismacolor, um, both Premier and Very Thin. And I've used the luminance, and then I also have um, I also have watercolor pencils, but uh, the the name of the brand escapes me at the moment. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's German. Uh, let's see. What am I doing here? I want to add a bit more red, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take the zero six five, kind of add some more red here. And a bit more red all over, actually. I'm going to work in the highlights 
and I kind of make this rose a bit more red because it's uh it's a bit too faded in my opinion so I want to get some of that red in there I'm just going to go kind of all over and uh, reevaluate where I have where I have my highlights where I have my colors and things like that and just kind of add a good layer of this uh, 065 the 065 is kind of the predominant color here so you know say you're working with like a and you want to do like a, a blue rose or something like that the way that I've used my 065 in this piece throughout you can you know switch your your color palette around and kind of uh, mirror the technique so that you know you don't have to make a red rose you can make an any color rose you want so there's that layer um, let's see I don't think I'm going to blend it out yet. I totally could, but I think what I'm going to do is add in my shadows. Um, so I'm going to take my my 407, and I'm just going to I'm just going to find those spots that I really want dark, and I'm just going to add my my darkest shadows, my darkest shadows, and this is what's going to help enhance the contrast of the piece overall which is always a positive thing. Um, and it's just going to help everything look shinier and more velvety. And that's exactly what I'm going for with this rose. The, the more, the, what gives the, the rose that, that shiny, velvety look is not just the texture, but it's also the contrast. Uh, the thumbnail for this video is is just a thumbnail. It's it's not a piece of artwork. Uh, so that's just my digital editing skills that that put that rose on a that makes it look like I'm drawing. So that's that was never drawn. That is this rose, but um, just digitally. It's not actually drawn. So you can already see how this contrast has helped bring this rose a bit closer to life. A bit more dramatic. It makes it a bit more dramatic as well. That's looking quite well. Now I'm going to blend it out. And this is actually going to be the last time that I blend the petals of the rose. Any other color that I add next, which will be a bit more shadow and a bit more highlight, will be simply to reestablish the texture that I'm losing as I blend. So I, when, I, when I want details to stand out, the last thing that I do is uh, add them with the pencil, not with the blending. The blending softens, desaturates, and uh, you lose texture and detail. That's why it's always important to, to keep your brush strokes um, 
in a way that helps reinforce the texture, not dissipate it. Yes, I definitely recommend Prismacolor pencils if you're just starting out. Um, I, I started with Prismacolor pencils and I absolutely love them. I, I would still work with them if I didn't completely love my luminance pencils uh, instead. I still have my set of Prismacolors um, sitting in a drawer over there. Uh, and, I, and I want to buy the full set. I want to buy a full set of Prismacolors and show and use them so that everybody can see that look, Prismacolors are just as acceptable um, to, to, to use. The thing about Prismacolors is they break easier, the, so the build quality is not the same. They're also not as light fast as the luminance pencils, and the, the light fastness is their degree in which they fade over time. Like when I, I'm not going to do a commissioned artwork with Prismacolors because I don't want my artwork to fade over time. I want them to have the highest quality product for the price that I charge them because I do charge uh, a, a pretty decent price. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't charge the price that I do if I was using uh, the student grade level pencils like Prismacolor. But Prismacolors are fantastic pencils and they're definitely worth getting if you're going to start colored pencils. I would recommend that brand over anything else if you're just starting. So now I'm just trying to blend out those shadows that I added just a little bit. I don't want to desaturate them too much, but I do want them to be uh, well blended. Um, so the price for my colored pencil work, how I establish the, the price is I kind of have a base price based on sizes. So for instance, like, um, like this size here would be standard, like 150 for this size, but depending on the, the subject and like the amount. So for instance, this rose has no background. So I take that into account when, when pricing my colored pencil work. Um, so if I was to have like an 11 by 14 piece and it would just be like a simple portrait, well, portraits aren't really simple, but a portrait piece um, with no background, then it'd be like $400. But if it was, um, if it included a background, then it would be, you know, six to $700 depending on the detail and composition and everything. So I take into account the composition and detail and subject matter of the piece, also with the size. I'm using the 4 of 7 to create some of the, to draw in some of the leaves. And I'm going to go through with my green. This is the 225 that I haven't used up to this point. And I'm going to draw in the stem. 
We're finally coming to an end here. I'm going to draw in the leaves and the stem, and then I'm going to take my white pencil and probably a couple of my other pencils and create some of the last bit of highlights and detail. I'm just going to color all the leaves and the stem in with this 225, and then I'm going to use the other colors to kind of blend layer and shadow shade um, right over top of it. Just, just using it as my, my base layer of color. So like I mentioned, I'm going to be painting uh, in acrylic for next week's live stream tutorial next Wednesday. What would you like to see me paint? I don't have any ideas uh, yet thought of, with the exception of kind of a simple sunset landscape kind of thing. So if you have any ideas, let me know, and I'm happy to consider them. All right, finishing up this layer with the 225, um, I'm going to switch to my other green color, which is the 739. I'm going to start drawing in some of the, the shadows. And pretty much the leaves here are pretty much the 407. They're really dark. Um, but I want to add the tint of green uh, as the base layer so that it's still visible. Uh, it's still visibly green. Uh, not a portrait. <laughs> not a portrait. I, I can't paint a portrait in a live stream, like, weekly tutorial. It would just take way too long. Eventually, I will do... Eventually, I will do a portrait live stream, but I probably won't do it for YouTube. I'll probably only do that for Patreon supporters because um, it, would, it would be drawing a portrait essentially for free, which uh, I struggle with the idea of doing that. Um, and then uh, having to do it live uh, would take a, just a, so much time. I probably have to do it in stages. So like doing the uh, background, doing the hair, doing the skin, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, now I'm going to go through with the 407 and kind of uh, just get everything really dark. And that will be pretty much it for the stem. Uh, and then I'll blend it out. And then I'll add the last few details, and that'll be it for this tutorial. Uh, some water, some landscape. Uh, landscape or a flower? Well, seeing how I did a flower this week, um, I think I might do a landscape. So I'll do like a sunrise, I'll do like a sunset landscape with some water, uh, maybe some mountains, and who knows what else. I'll, I'll, I'll think of something. Maybe do like a fantasy landscape. Some really pretty sunset colors. Just to start it off. All right, so there's the stem. I'm gonna blend this out, brush it off really quick, get rid of the dust. Uh, blend it out now. Should make it nice and smooth. I, I had quite a bit of pencil pressure for this, so I shouldn't have to add any more layers to get a nice smooth coverage. And my fiance is just walking in.
Uh, so doing prints of your artwork, I go to a printer locally. I just walk there. It's not too far away and get prints printed out there. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have very many sizes to choose from, but um, having them done on a website, uh, it cuts into the profit margin way too much to make it beneficial. Um, so I, I I don't really sell too many prints anyway. So I, I don't really I don't have a lot of focus on printmaking at this point in time. All right. So now I'm going to start working the highlights in with the white. Um, and that will be it. So I'm gonna just start with the stem here. Add a little bit of light on this side and on this side. Uh, and then some on the leaves as well. So just kind of in here and over here, just a little bit. And I want to clean my pencil tip. I don't want to go smearing green all over my pretty red rose. So I'm just going to wipe off the tip of my pencil. Um, and let's see, I'm going to add a nice bright highlight here. And kind of work it in over here as well. Here. And I want to pay attention to the texture of the petals when it counts. And then some here as well. I love the luminance white. It, it's very uh, opaque and it's great for the the finishing touches of highlights. My fiance is creeping on me right now, staring at me as she's doing things. Yes, I had a lot of fun with everybody. I appreciate you coming and watching the live stream. I hope uh, hope you learned some things at the very least. I will have my next live stream will be tomorrow, actually. Um, it will be at a different time, though. Um, It'll be a bit earlier, so, so maybe my U.S. audience won't get to join in um, unless you wake up really early. But yeah, I will. I'll be live streaming the Chibi this episode tomorrow, and um, I don't know who I'm drawing for that, but that live stream will go up um, about noon my time. It's about 6 a.m. New York time. All right, so there you have. All right, so I think that's gonna be it for this rose. Um, again, oh, when is the okay. I'll, I'll get her to do another voiceover soon, don't worry. <laughs> Um, anyways, so this is the finished look at the rose. Um, hopefully this live stream was helpful. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Chibi This live stream. And um, yes, so next week I'll be doing an acrylic painting live stream tutorial for some kind of landscape. I'll figure it out. And um, 
Yeah, uh, keep the suggestions coming as far as what tutorial you'd like to see next. And remember, after next week, after next Wednesday, the live streams will only be for Patreon supporters. Once I set up, reset up my Patreon page, um, you'll be able to pledge for that to get access to these live streams every Wednesday. Or actually, I might move them to Friday, so I don't, I don't know. It just depends. I'll move them around based on um, Patreon support and uh, getting that live stream available to as many people as possible. But anyways, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.